Unicorn Overlord has at its core a deep tactical unit building system that really encourages you to experiment and try different setups. In the early game, you'll have a few basic setups that will really work well, but as you get deeper in or play on higher difficulty, you'll find that you'll need to start tinkering with your unit builds and consider which ones to even deploy in a given battle. This very fact of the game gradually becoming more complex and unit builds becoming more and more nuanced as new character types are unlocked and encountered on the battlefield means that our builds really need to be fluid. We need to focus around some core ideas rather than saying putting a Lord Thief and Hellscroll together is unstoppable. This is a decent unit early on, but becomes much less useful later on. So what are those core ideas we should stick to? Well, let's talk about it. The first thing to consider when building our units is who are our frontliners, who is better on the back line, and do we want the unit to be a combat unit or more of a support unit? Frontline characters, for instance, are going to be your fighters, knights, hoplites, and even thieves. Fighters and hoplites for their high defense and ability to shield allies from ranged attack, knights for their high defense and guard, and thieves for their high evasion and ability to make enemies miss. Backline characters are your hunters, casters, shamans, clerics, priestesses, and even some classes you may first think of as frontline units like gladiators, soldiers, sellswords, housecarls, and warriors. Backline classes tend to be your strikers, dealing the most damage, but they also are quite fragile, hence their position in the back lines. Now, we've covered very generally where each class should be placed in a unit, but we also need to consider if we even want a unit to be a direct combat unit or a support unit. For instance, a unit with just a single cleric is a viable support unit on the battlefield. As long as we keep it out of combat, we can use the cleric unit's heal support to help our direct combat units in and out of combat. A unit of archers is a viable artillery unit to give long range support, and similarly, so are units of casters. Now, obviously each of these classes can be used in a direct combat unit to great effect, but depending on the units you are fighting, it can sometimes be better to just keep units with these classes in support roles particularly with healers, as with the small unit sizes in the early game, they limit the amount of attacks their unit can actually perform since they themselves do not attack. So, having covered the basics of unit composition, let's try to talk about a few specific setups and where they can be most effective. Also remember that all this info comes from the demo and should be considered an early game guide, though I'm sure some of this info will apply throughout the game. So, ultimately, building units for success really comes down to the battle at hand and the needs of the moment. But there are a few basic units you can use to get started from my experience in the demo. The first of these is Cavalry. Put Clive and Joseph together and they'll make short work of any infantry unit anyone else is having trouble with. This is your nothing else works, so I'll bludgeon it option. Seriously, this works against mages, soldiers, housecarls, and nearly anything else. Only units with hoplites or thieves might slow them down, but if your cavalry is properly supported in the back line with a caster for the hoplite or a hunter for the thief, even those two unit types will be no trouble at all. Next, a unit with a thief in the front and a lane and a house car in the back can be a good combined arms unit, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that will do very well against most anything early on. This unit will be very effective against any thieves you come across, and with the house car in it, it could even be effective against hoplites too. This unit will struggle against units with multiple attacks like those made of cell swords and house carls if they also have a strong defender like a hoplite out in front. Then a unit made up of casters in the back and a strong defender up front like a hoplite or maybe even a fighter can be really good against any heavies you come across but may have trouble against other caster units as they can easily take out your defender in the front. In that case, summing out the defender for a thief can solve that issue as enemy casters will most likely just miss the thief, wasting their powerful attacks. Another slight variation on this is a unit with a thief in the front and a caster and a heavy hitter, like a cell sword in the back. This setup can absolutely wreck a lot of enemy formations too. Now, for a more nuanced build that I think is quite effective, you could put a hoplite out in the front and a witch and a gladiator in the back line. The hoplite will soak up just about anything besides magic or a warrior's giant hammer, this then gives the witch time to shoot off some ice magic and then buff the gladiator's attack with magic as well. Since the gladiator will most likely still be at full health too, being in the back line, his wide slash attack will do major damage to every unit in the front line, even hoplites, because of the magic buff. 
If you're facing units with thieves in the front, hunters and their true strike will be great for taking them out so that your other units can get past them to hit the rest of the enemies. However, a unit with hunters has to be very careful picking a fight with units that have fighters or hoplites in them as their attacks will just get wasted on these defender types. This means that hunters can often be relegated to a support role using fire support to help another unit's battle and only engaging against targets of opportunity which the hunters can be effective against. Now, the units that I've had the most trouble with are those made up of cell swords. Cell swords just hit so hard, and then their following slash attack goes off every time an ally is hit, which can lead to them attacking several times in one bout of combat, as if the attack hits, they get their passive ability point back and can then do this attack again. Even with a thief in the front line, which is the best way to counter them, they can still sometimes get enough attacks off that they can eventually take out the thief and then get to those backline units. In fact, I've seen in many cases, you'll need to use one unit first to weaken an enemy before moving in with another to finish it off. For instance, you may need to use a caster unit to take out the hoplite in an enemy unit before using a high initiative unit like one with hunters, warriors, house carls, or knights to finish off the rest of the enemy unit. Depending on enemy unit composition, there may not be a perfect counter, and some of your units may have to be sacrificed a bit to take enemy units out. So while I'd like to tell you that yes, this unit or that will absolutely dominate no matter what, I can't. Which is part of the beauty of Unicorn Overlord's unit building system. Each part of a unit has its strengths and weaknesses that affect the whole, making solid builds a challenge to find. It's much better to look at what you'll be facing in an upcoming battle and then build your units for that specific challenge. Of course, I've just covered the surface in building units by talking about types of classes to build them out of. I haven't even delved into the tactics you can assign each one of your characters with any unit. For instance, having your hunters prioritize casters or backline units can make a huge difference in their combat effectiveness as can having casters prioritize armored units. Even having units prioritize enemies with the lowest HP can get them to focus fire on single enemy characters rather than spreading damage around, which is terrible to do when the enemy unit has any healing characters like clerics or soldiers in it. However, we again have a situation where these tactics may need to change depending on the particular fight at hand, and you can even change tactics mid-battle in between fights as needed. At the higher difficulties, managing your tactics will become a must, though I think at lower difficulties you can get away with much less micromanagement. I will say that even at the higher difficulties though, there are some pretty standard defaults like having archers focus on backline units that will work in most cases. So ultimately, building your units for success is a constant process that needs to refine as you progress in the game's campaign and unlock new classes and face new classes in battle. If you find yourself having a hard time countering a specific unit composition, try recreating it in a mock battle and try different builds to counter it until you find one that works. Doing this could be a lifesaver in an upcoming battle. Also, if you need more tips on how to win battles in Unicorn Overlord, remember to like this video and subscribe as that will make more tips and guides appear. Then watch this video here that just appeared because you hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching, have a great day, and keep on gaming.